Olympic boxer Imane Khalif or Khalif. Are you tired of politicking talking heads and bloviating idiots debate the gender of this boxer? Me too. Pundits whose entire argument on one side is, well, she doesn't look like a boy, and on the other side, crying conspiracy theory because the IOC hasn't released the results of the chromosome test. Heatedly exchanging opinions without any factual basis. If that empty debate is your brand of vodka, keep scrolling. If you want the real scientific facts behind the gender debate, stick around. I'm Dr. Rich, an American medical doctor, board certified in OBGYN and urogynecology. Halif and Lin Yu Ting have a condition known as DSD or disorder of sexual development. Now, disorders of sexual development consist of about 40 different conditions. And it's estimated that somewhere between one in 100 and one in 2000 people have this condition. What is DSD? Well, these conditions result in a person with a male karyotype or male XY gene having female genitals and female characteristics. What is not a disorder of sexual development? Transgender, men who identify as women or transsexual men who medically and or surgically transform their body into having female characteristics. Transgender and transsexual individuals are completely unrelated to the Olympic boxer debate. How then is it possible for a genetic male with a karyotype 46XY to be identified at birth by a doctor as a female raised as a female, go through puberty and develop secondary sexual characteristics as a female, and go through life unaware that they have a Y male chromosome. Let's dive into this. It's gonna get a little technical. So right now, hit that subscribe button and watch again later. Now let's start with what about your DNA determines your genetic sex. Everybody has an idea, a concept that the DNA is the blueprint, the genes from which all of your characteristics develop. Now humans have 46 batches of DNA called chromosomes, 23 pairs. The sex determining pair is XX in women and XY in men. At fertilization, the single cell baby or zygote gets an X from your mom and an X or a Y from your dad. As the embryo grows, it develops gonads, a general term for testicles or ovaries. Now I'm about to go full nerd on you, so um, let me see. You know what? I'm just gonna draw this out. I'm Dr. Rich, and school's in session. So. As we established, the woman's DNA gives them 46 chromosomes and two X chromosomes, which makes them woman. The man has 46 chromosomes with an XY. The Y makes them men. And here's why. The Y chromosome has a region called the SRY, which produces a protein called TDF, or testes determining factor. TDF then stimulates the undifferentiated gonad into a testicle. Then the Sertoli cells of the testicle produce a substance called anti-mullerian hormone. The predecessor of the female uterus, tube, cervix, and upper vagina are called the mullerian structures, and anti-mullerian hormone causes these structures to regress leaving the Wolfian ducts to develop into the male external genitalia, internal and external, and the testosterone drives the development of the scrotum and penis. At puberty, the relative predominance of testosterone compared to estrogen causes the lack of development of breast tissue. Now, on the female side, the 46XX does not contain a Y chromosome, does not have an SRY region, does not produce TDF. The undifferentiated gonad in lack of stimulation of TDF automatically develops into an ovary. The lack of anti-Millerian hormone allows the Millerian structures to develop, including the uterus, cervix, tubes, and upper two thirds of the vagina. The lack of testosterone allows the external genitalia to develop into the clitoris, labia, vagina, and vulva. 
So this is the normal process. So what could possibly go wrong to cause a 46XY individual boxer to turn into and have female primary and sexual secondary characteristics? Let's check it out. In the case of Swire syndrome, there's a defect in the SRY gene on the Y chromosome. No testes determining factor is produced. The lack of TDF allows the gonad to develop into ovary, but in this case, it actually becomes just scar tissue with no hormonal production. But since it's not a testicle, there's no anti-mullerian hormone produced, allowing the uterus to develop along with the cervix, tubes, upper two thirds of the vagina. Again, the gonad is a streaked ovary. There's no testosterone produced. The lack of testosterone influence allows the female external genitalia to develop. So at birth, this 46XY with a defect on the Y chromosome is born with a vagina, with external genitalia that are female, with a uterus, and with a cervix and tubes. Now, they go through childhood and at puberty, because they don't have functional ovaries, uh, they don't start their period, and this is typically the first time that anybody asks any questions about what's wrong with the anatomy. They find no functional ovaries. Now, in most cases when this is discovered, they're actually given supplemental hormones to allow for breast development, uh, and they carry on as both having the secondary sexual characteristics, external genitalia, and internal genitalia of a woman. They cannot naturally become pregnant because there's no eggs in the ovary, they're fibrous scar tissue, and they can become pregnant with a donor egg, uh, even though this patient genetically is a 46XY, but lives their entire life, and in every sense is a female. In the second example, androgen insensitivity syndrome, the 46XY does have an SRY region, it does create TDF, the TDF does cause the gonad to differentiate into a testicle. The problem is all of the receptors in the boxer's body are resistant. They don't bind to the testosterone. So it's, it's as if there's no testosterone effect in their entire body, even though they have measurable levels. Because it is a testicle, it does produce AMH and none of these structures develop. There is no uterus, there's no cervix, there's no tubes. There are testicles that produce testosterone, but since none of the tissues are sensitive to testosterone, the female external genitalia develop. At birth, they have every physical appearance of a female. They go through life at puberty. Again, they don't have periods. A workup is done. They are found to not have a uterus. Genetic testing can reveal that they are uh, 46XY with this androgen insensitivity. Now, because they do not have tissue sensitive testosterone, they actually develop breasts. Uh, they don't have any pubic hair or armpit hair. Um, and unfortunately, in this AIS scenario, because there's no uterus, they cannot become pregnant. But they do have a short, although functional, vagina. Uh, about one third the normal length. They have external female genitals. They have breasts. And so even though this person has a 46XY genetic designation as male, they are entirely female and live their entire life as a female. Now these are two conditions. I mentioned there's at least 38 others, which we don't have time to go into now. But one notable subcategory of AIS, there's complete and there's partial AIS. So in partial, there is some testosterone sensitivity that allows for uh, a muscular build, allows for uh, length of jaw, a late closure of the uh, bones, allowing for a higher height in those individuals. The ovaries are actually five times more likely to develop cancer. So they're needed to get the patient through puberty for breast development. But after that point, the undescended abdominal testicles are removed for cancer prevention purposes. And nobody knows for sure, but certainly this makes sense for the boxers having this type of 
disorder of sexual development. This is Dr. Rich spitting facts. So let's stop this nonsense debate about transgender and transsexual in this specific example. These are women who've lived their entire lives as women. They're not woman by choice. They are woman by birth. They deserve the right to compete as women and they deserve our respect and support.